Sharks have had a place in the ecosystems of the ocean for over 400 million years, being present in the sea long before dinosaurs existed, even before trees existed, and sharks are in fact roughly as old as terrestrial plants. Over this vast amount of time, it is often thought that sharks have stopped evolving, or remained unchanged for many millions of years. However, in their long history, they have adapted many new forms, and they continue to evolve to this day, and no group of sharks shows this more than the hammerhead sharks, that very recently in geological terms have made the very extreme adaptation of a hammer-shaped head, and evolving to have their eyes on stalks, and there is no fossil evidence that sharks have evolved anything like this before. So why do they have their famous head shape? And despite living this long, why is this the first time they have adapted such a feature? The technical name for the hammerhead shape is a cephalofoil, and it is a truly unique structure, not just among sharks, but the whole animal kingdom. The only known animal that has something even remotely similar was a very ancient amphibian named Diplocorlus, that lived around 300 million years ago, and even this was not completely analogous because its eyes were still on its head, and the shape was fairly different. Working out why hammerheads have these elaborate head shapes has not been easy, as is the story with many sharks, complete fossils of prehistoric hammerheads are almost non-existent. Because sharks have skeletons made of cartilage, their remains are much quicker to decompose than other animals. However, shark teeth are calcified, and so are more likely to survive the fossilization process, and like most sharks, hammerheads do have a rich fossil history of teeth. And although these fossilized teeth don't reveal much about how their famous head shape evolved, or what their ancestors looked like, they do offer clues about how old they may be. There are fossilized teeth that may have belonged to hammerheads dating back to around 45 million years ago. However, genetic evidence shows that the nine species of hammerhead sharks that live today separated just over 20 million years ago, meaning that hammerheads must have first appeared some time between these two dates. And this would actually make them the youngest group of sharks known to exist, despite making such an extreme change. Another reason why understanding hammerhead evolution has been so challenging is that they have undergone something known as evolutionary exaptation. DNA evidence strongly suggests that all the hammerhead shark species share the same hammerheaded ancestor, and so the structure has only evolved one time. However, the different hammerhead shark species actually show a lot of diversity in their head shapes. The scoop head shark has a small hammerhead that is rounded off at the front, and on the other extreme of the hammerhead sharks is the winghead shark, that can have a head measuring almost half its body length. All this diversity most likely means that today hammerheads serve different purposes which is known as evolutionary exaptation. This is when an animal evolves a certain feature for a certain purpose, but then later readapts it for something different, or builds upon the original adaptation with something new. A mutation can start that then reaches a point where it is possible for other adaptations to arise. So in the case of hammerheads, there are actually multiple purposes for their head shape, and it is actually just a case of trying to suss out what their original purpose was that actually kicked off the evolution of the structure to begin with. For instance, there is some evidence that hammerheads may use their head to help with hydrodynamics. The shape of the cephalofoil in some of the largest species of shark is quite similar to an airfoil, which led some researchers to conclude that it may create lift or help them turn faster. The study couldn't prove if the hammerhead shape was responsible, but hammerheads do seem to be more agile than an average normal shark. However, even if it is proven that their head shape allows them to be more agile, it is unlikely to be the original purpose of the structure, because the cephalofoil of the smaller species of hammerhead sharks, like the bonnethead shark, doesn't produce lift. This means that the cephalofoil probably already existed, serving a different purpose, and then was adapted on later to be more hydrodynamic. The greater hammerhead, the largest and most famous of all the hammerheads, also certainly use their head shape to increase their senses. Hammerhead sharks primarily hunt rays, skates, and other creatures that are able to bury under the seabed, so the sharks require excellent senses to seek them out. Like all sharks, hammerheads are capable of electroreception, the shark's extra sense that can detect electrical signals in their prey. Sharks are able to do this due to a set of pores on the underside of their heads named ampullae of Lorenzini. Hammerheads have more of them, and they are spread out across most of the length of the cephalofoil, so it is reasonable to suggest that they may have a better electroreception than most other sharks. The cephalofoil may even improve their sense of smell, 
as research has shown that sharks are very good at sensing the direction of scent using their nostrils. The nares on hammerhead sharks are spread further apart down their cephalofoil, meaning they may be able to more finely discriminate the direction of scent. The cephalofoil being used to aid their sensory organs is consistent with the greater hammerhead's predatory behaviour as well. They often sweep across the seabed moving their head like a metal detector, seeking out prey concealed under the sand. So, hammerhead sharks have adapted their head shape to become perfectly adapted stingray predators. Well, this isn't necessarily the case. Whereas greater hammerheads primarily hunt rays, most of the other species just hunt smaller fish, having a similar diet to similar sized sharks of other species. But more importantly, having their eyes at the end of the cephalofoil wouldn't be necessary for these adaptations, and remains unique to hammerhead sharks. For instance, rays also share the same electroreception abilities that sharks have. Rays evolved from animals that would have looked similar to sharks, and one of the explanations behind their body shape is that it also gives them a larger area to detect electrical signals, like hammerheads. However, their eyes are still on top of their head. One explanation for the bizarre eye placement is that it may actually help improve their vision. It looks like having their eyes wider apart would negatively affect their depth perception, which would be bad for a predator. However, a 2009 paper that calculated the line of sight of sharks challenged this on multiple fronts. It is common for predatory animals to have their eyes on the front of their face, as this gives them a larger section of vision with their line of sight being produced by both eyes overlaps, which provides better depth perception. However, the study found out that sharks are somewhat unusual in this regard, where the pattern of their line of sight actually doesn't overlap that much, and they can see a fair amount behind them which is a line of sight more similar to what you see in prey animals. The study was conducted on all hammerhead species and two different shark species, the black nose and the lemon shark, and the results were very conclusive. The hammerhead species had a larger overlap in their binocular vision than the normal sharks. However, more importantly, all of the different species of shark incrementally had a larger overlap in the line of sight of their eyes, the wider their cephalofoil was, showing that it did improve their line of sight. So even the sharks with a very small amount of eye separation, like the bonnethead shark, have a small increase in overlap. This shows that a very small cephalofoil makes at least some difference for natural selection to get to work and for the shape to get larger and larger over time. It is sensible to assume that the most primitive of the hammerhead species would be a species like the bonnethead, that then evolved to get larger and more specialised over time in different species. However, DNA evidence has actually shown the complete opposite is true. Their DNA strongly suggests that the winghead shark was the first species to branch away from the lineage, and its truly giant proportioned hammerhead is the primitive condition of these sharks, and that the other species actually adapted to have smaller cephalofoils, with the bonnethead shark being the most recent species to appear. Looking at the cephalofoils across the different species, there are subtle differences between density of pores, hydrodynamics, and nostril placements. So the hammerhead shark ancestors would have had a fairly large cephalofoil, and then over time the different species adapted their hammerheads to suit their different environments, with the trend being them shrinking. The winghead shark specifically has a more primitive layout of its sense organs on the snout, with its electric detecting spores clustered more in the centre as well, which proves that although hammerheads definitely use their cephalofoil to enhance their sense, this wasn't the original purpose of the structure. It was also found that the ancestor of the hammerhead shark was quite large, and the smaller species evolved this way, potentially due to a phenomenon called neoteny, which you can learn more about in this video here. So not only do sharks continue to evolve to this day, but when you scratch below the surface, some of them have a recent and incredibly complex evolutionary history. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes out to all my patron supporters, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.